How's it going? It's Mike Barnes from Lance Quarters Farm. So I wanted to do a part two in this series on propagating strawberries like the pros. So in part one, which I will link to here in case you haven't seen it, we talked about getting our runners from the mother plants of the strawberries. And what we did was we brought those runners back, um, but I'm on my porch, which is a covered porch in an open air situation. But the important thing is, is that it's shaded. So what we did in that part one video was we cut our runners, we brought them back, and we put them into cell trays into soil. And so I'll give you an update and show you how they've been doing. But since that part one video, I've learned of a new technique, kind of an alternate mode technique that I wanna show you in this video on how to increase the chances that these runners are gonna be successful. So let me first of all show you the runners and how they've done so far. So here are our runners that we did in the first video. And you can see that, so we get some of this dye back here. And so, or, you know, when you do the initial cutting from the mother plants, they are shocked, right? Because they've been getting all those nutrients from the mother plants and then we're coming and we're sticking them in soil and then we're, we, we need them to do a quick transition from getting their nutrients and their life from the mother plants to then getting the life from this soil. So in the first week or so, they looked a little pathetic. They were getting droopy and, and uh, th like this was pretty common. This sort of thing was pretty common here to have these kind of dead leaves. But I would say in the last three or four days, they have really perked up. They're coming back to life. You can see some of this bright green material here is indicating new growth. Now, the one thing I will tell you though, is that with this technique, I had some losses and I've pulled out some of the losses just so that they didn't rot. But you can see there's an empty cell here, there's empty cell here, empty cell here. So of these 72 cells, I think I probably pulled out about, oh, under 10. So, you know, basically a 10% loss. And the same might be true here. This I didn't actually pull any out of, but you can see like, here's a prime example here. This is dead. This guy back here, that's dead. I would have to pull that out. And you know, I really may not know the full extent of the losses until we go to do the transplanting. So let's talk about why that's happening. So this is something that I've since discovered about these uh, runners, is that, you know, not all the runners are created equal. So I have two runners here, and this runner, you can put this right in soil. This runner, on the other hand, it does not have a lot of root development. It just has these little nubs. And so that would be risky to put that into soil. So we're gonna do an intermediary step in order to get these runner, or in order to get these roots to grow out a little bit more before we put them in soil. So I'll show you what I'm gonna do in order to get these short roots to grow. So last week I set up these two 72 cell trays here. And what I did, there's no soil in this, it's water. This is a similar technique that people would use to start sweet potatoes by just putting the sweet potatoes in water and then, um, and then they'll grow roots. So this morning I was up in my strawberry row again and I was cutting off more runners from my ever-bearing strawberries. And this is the result of them here as well as these ones. And I wanna show you what I'm doing right now. So what I'm doing is I'm taking everything that I cut this morning and I'm basically putting them into two categories. Runners that need more time for their roots to develop and runners that are ready to go into soil right now. So any time where I have the runners that haven't had that full root development, that they're just those little nubs, I'm putting them into this tray over here. And when they do have good root development like this one, I put it into this tray. So this tray is gonna get planted into the cell trays with soil in it today, or this tray is gonna have it just dipped in water for the next week or two to try to promote the root development first. So again, here's one that has good root development. I'll be putting this into soil today. I'm just staging it in water here for now as I'm doing the sorting. This one here does not have good root development. So I'm gonna put it over here. All right, so I've gone ahead and I've separated those groups into these are the ones that are going to need to soak in water for a bit longer and these are the ones i'm going to be putting into soil today so lots of root development on these 
I'm also going through the ones that I've put uh, into these water trays about uh, four or five days ago, and I want to see how they're doing. Here's an example of one of them that I pulled out that shows you some of the fresh root development. So these are all brand new roots that have just started growing since I submerged them in water. That's only after about four or five days. So it doesn't take long, but that's not consistent because some of them I'm pulling up don't have any change to them at all. But I'm gonna sort these because I don't want them sitting in the water for too long because they will start to rot. All right, so I've got my sorting completed. So this is my tray that has all of the strawberry runners that have good root systems that I'm now going to plant into my 72 cell tray. You know, when you're doing this kind of system, which is very compact, there's not a lot of soil in these 72 cell trays to support growing strawberry plugs. So one thing's for sure, there's not a lot of soil in these 72 cell trays to support these strawberries growing for very long. You know, I'm looking at probably a four to six week maximum that these will be in these trays. And then we'll go on to part three of this video series. And then we'll go on to part three of this video series, which is taking all of these propagated strawberry runners and planting them out into the field. So I'm gonna go ahead and start planting these and I'll add a little bit of commentary as I'm doing the work here. So this time around, we do have a root system. So that's different from the first time. And we have to be a little bit more delicate when we're plugging these guys in. So you don't wanna snap these little roots off. So I'm just taking my finger and I'm kind of pressing in a little hole and then I'm bringing some of this soil and I'm bringing it around. One thing you don't wanna do is you don't wanna bury any of the leaves or vegetation into the soil because that's gonna create a rot and that rot could end up uh, going up the entire plant. So one of the things I love about strawberries, one of the reasons why I'm putting so much effort into them this year, is that they really have, they really are a plant that that is just so easy to propagate. The plants are propagating themselves by putting off these runners. So it makes it so easy for somebody that wants to expand the amount of strawberries they have to take advantage of that and collect these runners. As I mentioned in the first video, you know, the typical method of just pushing down the runners into empty soil near the mother is the most effective method. And with this method here, there are gonna be losses. I will follow up in part three of this series to be completely clear about how many losses I had. But absolutely, when you have the mother plants and you have space nearby those mother plants, pushing those runners right into the ground is the most effective method. So why would you wanna have so many extra strawberries like, you know, in part one, I mentioned that I'm looking to get at least 1,000 free plants from these strawberry runners. My plan is I'm gonna be selling strawberries, so that makes it super simple. Um, you could sell strawberries yourself if you're looking to do something like this. Um, you can even potentially sell the plants. Now here's where the obligatory legal disclaimer has to come in. When you buy strawberries, there's basically two types of varieties, uh, your royalty-free and your royalty varieties. And typically, many modern varieties are not royalty-free, meaning that a company has trademarked that variety and it's illegal to propagate and sell, particularly selling those royalty-based Varieties. Now, are there people out there that are propagating their own strawberries from royalty uh, trademarked plants that aren't paying royalties? <laughs> Absolutely. Does anybody find out about them? No. Is that something I'm going to promote and recommend? Well, no. <laughs> but, I mean, people do it. What I would really be um, wary of is if you decided to sell plants, because that's when you could potentially put a target on you if you're trying to um, take a patented variety and then propagate them and then sell them for profit. Because when, when I buy these plants from a nursery, I have, to I have to pay the nursery the royalty fee for each one of the plants. 
And of course, if I propagate those plants to make more plants, I wouldn't be paying the world. But to then take those plants and sell them without paying a royalty, that's, you know, to create commerce out of something that's been trademarked, that's really when you want to be careful. So how can you avoid it, get around it? I mean, well, don't sell them. Or when you buy your varieties, you want to investigate the royalty and patent status of it because there are varieties that you can get that don't have any kind of patent or royalty paying requirement on them. And those are typically going to be your varieties that are older, uh, your heritage varieties. So these two trays here represent the water trays, the hydration trays. So these are all runners that don't have uh, well enough roots established, and we're going to let them sit in the water for, I would say, somewhere between five and seven days. Anywhere longer than that, and I think that you're risking the, the roots actually rotting. And one of the things that I've noticed with the first tray that I had was that once that rot starts to set in, then it pretty much is irrecoverable in terms of the plant will probably end up dying. So you don't want to let this sit in water for too long. And the other thing is, is that you can see with this material here, I've basically trimmed some of the leaves and the stems from the bottom because what we don't want is for any kind of foliage to be touching the water or be dipped in the water. So you kind of want to have just the tips in the water, not the foliage. The foliage in the water is going to be what ends up rotting. So you want to keep just the tips in the water. So in these two trays, uh, they're doubled up. So 72 cells. Um, so in total, there is uh, what? So 70, 70 times four is 28. So somewhere in the range of probably close to 300 starts are in here. And then these are the ones I did today that went into the soil. So their roots were well enough established. So we have one in each of the cells here. So 72 here. 72 here, 72 here, so that's uh, 70 times 3 is 210. So somewhere in the neighborhood of 220. So 220 there, and then the original uh, 140 from the top. So in total so far, 800 in total. So there's somewhere in the neighborhood of 800 starts that are here. So I hope you enjoyed that update. This is kind of a part two in this series. Uh, kind of an introduction to the hydration method that I use for runners that don't have a good enough root system, and then an update on the original ones that I did. Um, so part three, I'm basically looking at doing uh, bed prep and then putting these guys into the ground, and I'll show you that process. So subscribe to the channel for uh, that video coming up. As well, if you subscribe, you're going to get updates with my weekly vlogs where I will do a check-in on these guys. So you'll get kind of a week by week update and uh, we'll see how these do. So uh, yeah, this is Mike Barnes from Lance Quarters Farm and I hope you enjoyed this video and hope to see you in the next one.